welcome to The Truths. Today we're talking about Trump's seven nation ban. President Trump speaking about his controversial executive order, one that bars 134 million people from seven Muslim majority countries from coming to the United States. I suppose what we think on The Truths is what's happened is terrible, but how did we arrive at this point where it's possible to temporarily ban travel for people from seven nations? The nations in this instance, Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Interestingly, they have produced 7% of all the Muslim terrorists who have carried out terrorist attacks in the United States since 2001, and not a single person has died in any of those attacks. So you're not preventing, whatever you're preventing by doing this, it's not death. So that's sort of irrational and odd, isn't it? Here's some further information from Global Research .ca. I think it's a Canadian website. You can find out yourself. Have a look at this. We can see here that of terrorism carried out on US soil between 1980 and 2005, 42% of it was carried out by Latinos, 5% by communists. So it would be just as rational to ban Latino people or others. Others. We're all in trouble. Others done 16%. So now we know it's not rational. What is it? Why is this happening? I suppose we all know that a lot of Donald Trump's campaigning was done on the basis of America first. We're going to be drawing a line under this problem of terror. But what is terror? Continually, what is adjudged to be terrorism has at its roots, in this modern Islamic sense, the idea that it's motivated by religion. But that's only part of the narrative, as any of us who sort of concentrate for 15, 20 minutes or so understand. There are historical reasons for conflict between Western Occidental nations and uh, nations in the Middle East. Economic reasons, reasons of dabbling in people's de democracy like in Iran, the relationship between oil producing companies like Saudi Arabia and the American Saudi Arabia who interestingly aren't on the list and are a massive client buying billions and billions of dollars of arms for America. But between 2009 and 2015 the US have sold arms to Saudi Arabia worth more than 100 billion. Britain licensed more than 3.3 billion worth of arms to Saudi Arabia in 2016 alone. I mean I'm not complaining, put Saudi Arabia on the list as well. But what th there are clearly submerged narratives that tell a different story. That order signed Friday leading to instant chaos and confusion at airports at home and around the world. Travelers not allowed to board flights bound for the U.S. Some, including children, detained upon landing. What we can see is that the dominant narrative is actually an economic one. The primary relationships are economically led relationships and the whole narrative of uh, religious conflict and terror is a secondary narrative that's promoted to the forefront as a distraction. Is this a recent phenomenon? No, Donald Trump is merely building upon an established idea. We already had Guantanamo Bay, interestingly a place where people are tortured, deemed torturable, the kind of torture that Donald Trump would like to continue, which takes place off American soil outside of America itself it becomes permissible to commit torture. So if once you've decided that people are torturable, once you've decided that people it's safe to kill in drone strikes, which has been going on throughout the Obama administration, you're moving towards a point where it's natural to exclude people on the basis of religion. Now Trump maintains this process is a process that needs to be done in order to keep potential terrorists out of America and to keep Americans safe. The very definition of terrorism is something that needs to be questioned when you can see that more people are dying as a result of school shootings than what we would conventionally describe as terror. Of course people die from terrorism, but not as many people die from brain eating parasites, alcoholism, obesity, medical errors, risky sexual behavior, watch out for that everyone or all manner of potential causes of death that are not promoted and framed in the same way because these diseases and conditions don't frame the cultural narrative in a way that's helpful to control the domestic population and to continually frame one group of people as being the other, the irrational religious other, not the rational secular nation state that will use violence, that will use prejudice, that will use law to maintain its power. From the shadow of the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> to the gates of the White House. Refugees are welcome here. A weekend of protests over President Trump's immigration crackdown. My personal feeling is what Donald Trump represents is the end of the illusion that politics is inoffensive, neoliberal, and ultimately caring. That the intention of the powerful is to look out for po the population on a whole. That veil has been lifted. There's something about the grotesqueness of Donald Trump. There's something about the obviousness of a policy such as this one that reveals once and for all what has 
has long been concealed. That if you demarcate certain people as bombable, torturable, religious, therefore irrational and inferior, you will ultimately end up with these kind of populist measures. It's fantastic that there is now like backlash and a genuine protest movement, but it's important, I think, that what Donald Trump has done is placed in a historical context of long-standing prejudice against Muslim people and an international policy that is defined and determined by economics above all else. Let's see if there's anything positive we can drag out of this madness. Well, we can look at this. In a small city in Texas, Jewish people handed Muslim worshippers the keys to their synagogue after the town's only mosque centre was destroyed in a fire not long after Donald Trump made that legitimising statement. The president of the temple, Benai Israel, said, when a calamity like this happens, we have to stand together. What's interesting about that is that people of faith, people with religious beliefs, also participate in social life in a number of very positive ways and a continually pushed narrative that religion is inferior, mental, erratic and dangerous legitimises this kind of action. It's fantastic that there is this backlash, it's fantastic that there's this protest movement, but we must all acknowledge that this has been a long time coming, this argument, because we have tolerated already Guantanamo, we have tolerated already drone strikes, we have tolerated the oppression of Middle Eastern people for a long while because of uh, militaristic and economic reasons. And now we have reached the point where we realise how ugly our politics is. Our politics is very ugly. It's got Donald Trump's face on it. That's some true news. If you want to, subscribe here. But it doesn't actually really matter whether you do or don't. I will still continue to love you. Nose is a tool that is abused to leave you scared and confused Trolls is like the nose If the nose was true I want some trolls Let's have some trolls